Hey guys, in this video we're going to finish up the last piece that's missing from our application. Uh, currently there's nothing for this menu link up here in the navbar. Click on it nothing will happen. And so we're going to add a list of all of our menu items and a search bar to be able to filter through those items by a search query on this page. Uh, so let's get started with this by creating some views for this. Um, we'll need to create two different views. So we open up our text editor, uh, we'll close out some of these files, and we'll keep our um, customer views open. So I'll find my customer directory right here. And then inside here we have our views at py. And then if we scroll down, now we'll add two views here. We need to add one for the actual menu page to list all the items, and then one to filter the, the menu items by search query. So first we'll go ahead and create a new class. Do a class uh, we'll call it menu. We'll pass in our standard uh, generic view class. We'll add a get method on that. We'll do self request star args star star quargs, and then we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll uh, <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and first we'll get all of our menu items. So we'll do menu underscore items equals uh, menu item dot objects dot all. And then when it passes into our context, so we'll create a context variable, which will be a dictionary. And then inside here, we'll do menu underscore items. Set that to the value of just menu underscore items. And then finally, we'll go ahead and render our template. So we'll do return render request. And then customer slash menu dot html. And we'll pass in our context. Alright, so that's done there. Uh, we'll still need to create our template here in a second. Um, before we do that though, let's go ahead and create a... Let's, we'll, 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 <clears throat> well, actually, let's set up our next view. So we'll go ahead and we'll do class menu um, search, which will be a view class as well, a def git, and then inside of here, we'll just pass for now. Um, actually, we'll, we need to pass in our parameters still. So we'll do self request star args and star star quarks and we'll just pass it for now and now let's go ahead and create two URLs for both of these views um, so we'll go to our root URLs which is where we're keeping these at um, which should be uh, right here um, we'll come down here And let's go ahead and put these, um, we'll put it right below the about page, I guess. We'll go ahead and create another path. This will be menu slash, and then we'll pass in menu dot as underscore view. And then we'll give it a name equaling to, we'll just say menu. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and import this view. So up here, we'll go ahead and import it. And then let's go ahead and create a path for our, our search view as well. So we'll do a path uh, menu slash search. And then this will be menu search dot as underscore view. And with this name will be menu dash search. We'll go ahead and import that view as well. And now with all that set up, we can go ahead and um, create that uh, HTML template. So let's go back to our um, customer directory and we'll go into our templates customer and inside this folder here we'll create a new file and we'll call it menu.html and so first we'll go ahead and we'll just extend our base template like we normally do on all of our templates. So we'll do extends um, customer slash base.html and then we'll go ahead and create a content block. So we'll do block content. Here we'll do in block content. And now inside of here, let's go ahead and create a container. So we'll do div class container. We'll close that one off. 
And now within the side of this container, let's go ahead and create a row. So do div class equal to row, justify content dash center, margin top dash five. And then within this row, we'll go ahead and create um, a column. So do div class equal to column dash md dash six, column dash sm dash 12, text dash center. And then within this column, we'll go ahead and create h1, and we'll do uh, we'll say what's on our menu, and we'll go ahead and close off that tag, close off that column, close off that row. Um, below that row, we'll create another row, div class equal to row, justify content center, margin top dash five, um, and inside of this row, we want to create a column. This will do a column dash md dash eight, column dash sm dash twelve, and then text dash center again. Now within this column, we want to go and create our search form. Um, so first, we'll create an, a form tag. So do form with a method equaling to get, and then we'll put an action equaling. And this action, we want to set it to the menu search URL. So whatever URL we set for that uh, menu search view is what we want to put here. Um, so we'll pass in our curly braces, 2% signs, and we'll do URL, menu, desk, search. I'll explain all this here in a second. I'm just going to get it typed out first. And now with inside this form here, we need to go ahead and create a div class equaling md-form mt-0 active-cyan-2. Um, and this is all coming from Material Design Bootstrap. I'll put the link in the description for the form so you can look at the code and see what it's doing and you know see some other options if you want to switch this out with something else. And now inside this div here, we need to go and create our input field for the actual search bar. So we'll do a class equaling to form dash control. And we'll go ahead and give this a name equaling to Q, a type equaling to text, and a placeholder equaling to search our menu. Um, let's go ahead and add uh, area label dash label um, equaling to search and a value equaling to um, we'll pass in a Django template variable and we'll do request dot get dot q um, and that's it for that field. Now let's go ahead and close out all these fields real quick. So we'll do close out the div, close out the form, close out the column, and close out the row. So real quick, let's go over this and see what it's doing. So we have a form that sends a get request. And we're sending that get request to our menu search um, URL. So back in our views here, this get method will be called on our menu search class once we submit the form. So whatever we put inside here, will run after we submit the form. And then below that we have just a input field here. On this input field we have a name equals Q which is what we'll use to set our uh, URL parameter. So inside of our URL back in our website um, we will go to this, this we'll, cr we'll add um, the parameter to the actual URL. So in this case when we make a search it will go to menu slash search and then it will be uh, question mark Q equals, and then whatever we searched here, we'll go in this, uh, this search, search query variable right here. So if we search for appetizer, it would show up right here just like this. Um, we could then extract this from the URL to get the, the parameter or get the search query to be able to filter what's being listed on the page based off whatever is passed in here. And so it will set the name value to the parameter name. So that's what this is. So when we say name equals Q, that's what we're saying the Q, how we're setting Q inside of our variable name. And then also you'll see down here we have a value equals request.get.q. So in this case, if we were to search for appetizer, we want the actual search query to still be inside of the actual um, input field itself. And now we'll just fill it in if there is something there. If nothing's there, then it will just leave a blank. Um, hopefully that makes sense. If not, um, once we actually see the actual input field and everything working, 
hopefully it will make more sense then. So now the last piece of this template, we need to actually list out our menu items. Um, so now b below this row, we're going to go ahead and create another div, which will be another row, row justify content center, like before. We'll create another column, which will be, we'll do a column-md-4, column-sm-12, um, text-center, margin bottom-5. Uh, let's go ahead and close out that column, close out that row. So what we want to do, we want to loop through all of our menu items. So back in our views here, you'll see in this menu view, we set the variable name to menu items and pass it into our template as menu items. So we can loop through menu items and list out everything that's inside this variable. So to do this, we'll go ahead and make a for loop right up below our row. So right above our, our column, we'll do two curly braces uh, and two percent signs. We'll do for item in menu underscore items. And this will loop through all of our menu items. Let's go ahead and close out this for loop. Do n four right below our column closing tag for that div. And now we can access everything item dot image, item dot name, whatever else we want to get from um, from this item variable for each individual menu item inside the list. So let's go ahead and show some of the data from each object. So first, let's go ahead and create an image tag. We'll do a class equal rounded. Uh, we'll do src equaling to, um, we'll do two uh, curly braces, and we'll do item.image.url. And then we'll do a width, uh, we'll say, uh, I guess, 350, and a height equaling to 300. Um, and then below this, we're going to go ahead and add an h5 tag, do a class equal to margin top dash 3, um, and then we'll go ahead and pass in item.name. Um, and now below this, we'll go ahead and create a, a, a paragraph tag. Uh, we'll put price, colon, double curly braces, item.price. Um, and then below that, we'll make another paragraph tag and we'll just pass in just our item dot description. Um, that should be it. We'll go ahead and save that. And now let's go ahead and actually add the the functionality for the actual search bar. Or before we do that, let's go ahead and actually just make a change here. Let's jump into our navigation. And let's go ahead and change this menu link here to be um, URL menu. And now let's go back here, reload the page. Um, I have an error here, it looks like. Order pay confirmation is not. Oh, did I delete that on accident? I might have deleted that from my URLs. Order pay confirmation. Let's go back here and try this again. Let's go and go to our menu. And you'll see here we have all of our menu items being listed out right here. Um, you can go through and make this look better if you wanted to. Um, right now I'm mainly focusing on just making it functional and making this search menu functional. Um, so this is fine how it is. You'll see when we click on this, it will give us this blue outline. Um, that's our active cyan class we added. Um, but right now when we search for something, we'll search appetizer. Uh, right now it goes ahead and adds appetizer right here of question mark Q equals appetizer. But we get an error because our menu search view is doing nothing right now. So let's go ahead and actually make that work. So we'll jump back into our views.py. And now let's go ahead and add something to this get method here. So first, let's get that query from the URL. So whatever Q is equal to, let's get that first. So if to do that, I'll make a variable called query equals self dot request dot get dot get. And we'll pass in Q. And then we will do menu underscore items equals menu item dot objects dot filter and from here you want to go ahead and filter all of our menu objects based on whatever the query value is 
And to do this, we're going to use this thing called Q, um, which is just a something, just a function we can import from uh, Django.db.models, and it will just help us make these filtering for queries or filter the URL by the query a little easier. So let's go ahead up to the top here. Let's go below our Django views import, and we'll do from Django dot db dot models import q and then down here instead of our filter variable we can go ahead and oops, we can go ahead and add some some queer some filters here so first we'll type q oops, q and we'll put two parentheses and we'll do name double underscore i contains equals query we'll do a um, pipe for or and then we'll do q and then once again we'll do um, price double underscore i contains equals query um, we'll do another q and we'll do description double underscore i contains equals query. Uh, that's all we need to do to filter the results. Um, so what we're doing here is we're just filtering it by the name, price, and description. If our query parameter equals or is contained within our name, price, or description, it will show it in the list. Um, if you did the, if you saw the YouTube or the video sharing application that was built at first, um, we did the same thing there as we're doing here. So it's really the exact same thing, except now we're just filtering by only our name, price, and description for this application. Um, and that, with that done, all we need to do is now is pass this into the context and the render the template. So first, let's create a context variable. So we'll do context equals, um, and equals, we'll do menu underscore items, colon, menu underscore items. And then down here, we'll do return render request, comma, customer slash menu dot HTML context. So you'll see here, we're rendering the exact same template, the same menu dot HTML. Since this variable name is the same, we can reuse the same template and just output the different menu items based on this query, on this filter, I mean. Um, and so that's really it. That should make that menu search work. Let's go ahead and save everything. Make sure everything here is saved. Do save all. Now let's jump back into our app. Let's go back to um, just the home page. Oops. Right here, we'll go to our menu. And right now, everything's showing. If we type, um, let's say app, for example, search that, now only the appetizer is showing up. If we were to change this to drink, now only our drinks are showing up. Um, we can search for a price, so let's we'll say two ninety nine, two dot nine nine, and now everything that's priced either two ninety nine or twelve ninety nine because two is inside of two ninety nine is within that um, will show up. Um, we can search for the description, so we'll search drink one, and only that drink should show up. There we go. So our our search uh, bar is working pretty well now. Um, so you can see here, if we leave it blank, it shows everything. And so we're taking that um, name value, setting it to Q, and since this is a Git request, whatever we search in here will go right up here inside our URL. We're just going to our URL, we're grabbing that from it, and filtering the results based on whatever that value is. Um, so that's really it. That's all we want to do in this video. It's pretty easy. Um, but we want to finish that last part here so we had all of these different buttons and links working. And that's really it. That's all I was planning to do with this application. Um, so this might be the last video unless I come up with something else to add to it. Um, if, you want, if there's something else you want me to add, let me know. Otherwise, I'll probably stop it here and start a new project. Uh, I'll put the links to everything in the description, the links to the code before we started and, and um, after the video, the links to the material design bootstrap, um, the written tutorial and everything else that's usually down there. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.